Hello, good evening. Good evening. I guess we had a very fruitful day. Okay. So, as our practice is, before we start today, yes, we want to do a recap of what we studied the last time we met. So, Ramatu, if you can do us the honors by reminding us of what we studied the last time we met. Okay, if Ramatu cannot hear me, Derek. Hello, Derek. Hello, sir. Please, the question again. I want somebody to remind us of what we studied the last time. Okay. So I'm actually not, I'm actually at work. I'm, I'm in the middle of something, but let me try and recap on what we studied last Saturday. Okay. So basically, Derek, you are muted. Okay, I better. So I said we did charge over our sex. We went through the release, the still and all that. Hello, good evening, Ima. Yes, sir. So, hello. We have uh, also um it was recovery of unpaid tax from taxpayer. We did um sale of the charge assets, and then we also did um release of charge of assets, restraints of a person, and restraining others. So you may mention that um recovery of unpaid tax from taxpayer can be done through creation of charge over assets, and then through a uh, community uh, can also use restraint of the person or restraining others. Okay. So under that, we had the various discussions. Okay. Then we went to recovery of taxes from third parties. Yes, please. That was, I think, and then refund. Okay. Recovery of, yeah. Okay, that's fine. So today, we'll be looking at a new topic. Unfortunately, I am a little under the weather. So oh. my colleagues, Mr. Musa, will be taking us through uh, the lecture today. Mr. Musa. Oh, sir, we wish you speedy recovery. Thank you, Aveta. Hello, Mr. Musa. Hello, Mr. Musa. It appears he cannot hear me. Hello, Mr. Musa. If you can hear me, please take over now.
Okay, so Mr. Musa is back online. He will be taking us today on a new topic. Just as you have been giving me the maximum cooperation, I pray that you do same for Mr. Musa. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. So, Good evening. Mr. Please, Musa, can you hear me? Uh, your students. Can you hear me? Thanks. Thanks. I, I, I want to get, get it. And flare. Great. Great. So, enjoy this lecture. Okay. Thank you very much. Hello. Hello, sir. Hi. Hi. Hello. We can hear you, sir. Okay, so that's great. That's great. Uh, so today, as uh, my boss, Emmanuel, uh, have already made the, uh, like, done the introduction of uh, the tutor for tonight, uh, I think I'm stepping in to for us to go through fiscal policies uh, and then the tax implications when it comes to fiscal policies in Ghana per the news levels. So, uh, so um, you, my, my, as he, he made medicine, uh, my full name is Musa Crispinus Pindiba, so uh, without wasting much time, we'll just go uh, straight to what we're supposed to do today. But by then, maybe if somebody has a question on whatever that was taught uh, last week, uh, you can let us know so that we, we handle it before we, we proceed, please. If there's no question, let me get a response whether or not I move. Please, can I move on? Or you have anyone having a question? You can move on, sir. Okay. So um, let, 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 let's say a word of prayer before we continue. Heaven, Heaven Father, we thank you so much for today. Lord, we thank you for this evening. Your children have gathered again to discuss principle of taxation. Lord, we pray that you give us the strength, you give us the understanding. That, Lord, whatever we are going to discuss here, the day of accountability, Lord, that same thing will come and we'll be able to remember to produce relevant materials that will meet the requirement of the examiners. And at the end, we shall come out with placard less. And Lord, we shall gather together to give you thanks and give you glory. We'll pay, pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Yeah. So, Amen. yes. So, So today we will look at fiscal policies. Uh, we will look at the type of fiscal policies and the instrument of fiscal policies. Uh, fiscal policies, uh, as uh, we always hear with the uh, Minister of Finance of uh, fiscal uh, when the budget is being read or when he is preparing for uh, to send to, to appear before Parliament. To present the budget, we have we always hear of fiscal policy, fiscal policies. So we we'll look at what fiscal policies are, the type of fiscal policies, and uh, the instruments of fiscal policies, and we will look at other areas as we progress. So fiscal policies, as I made mention, is simply how government uses her revenue expenditure at. As, as, as revenue and expenditure 
activities to influence the direction of what the economy or in order to achieve a certain state objective because it's it's it's, it's more or less how so every year the the the, the government per the constitution which is always represented by the minister of finance have to tell us how the government of Ghana is going to raise revenue, how he's going to spend. So that is why we have the, the, the definition of fiscal policy being how the uh, government is going to use this revenue and expenses or expenditure to be able to influence how the, uh, the behavior of the economy should look like. Or government can use this revenue or expenditure to direct the economy into a certain uh, circumstances to be able to achieve some stated objectives. And what are the objectives that uh, the, the government can be able to use this as a physical tool to be able to achieve? We are looking at full employment. Government can use this to be able to, uh, to achieve full employment or create employment Second is to increase our aggregate demand, to combat inflation, and to secure rural urban imbalance. So to also increase economic growth and promote economic development. So government can use these fiscal policies to direct the economy in such a way that all these objectives are being achieved. And as I made mention, uh, per, the, per, the, per the constitution is the minister of finance who represent the government to do so the the budget will be present uh, prepared based on the budget estimate which is submitted to the cabinet for approval before uh, the, the the budget is presented to parliament for approval we are not doing public sector so i wouldn't go much into how the budget uh, the public financial management cycle, how it's been prepared. But what you are supposed to know for the uh, purpose of taxation is to know what fiscal policy is, as I explained. It is how government uses her revenue and expenditure activities to influence the direction of the economy. And government is doing this basically to achieve some objectives. And I mentioned a few of those objectives is to create employment, to combat inflation, to uh, increase economic growth, and promote economic development. So, as I made mention, the main physical tool is the government budget. The main physical tool is the government budget, which I made mention. And the, the budget is a blueprint of the government expected revenue and expected expenditure for a financial year. So, every year, the Minister of Finance will be from the budget tell us how government is going to raise revenue? Is it that he's going to increase taxes or come out with new taxes? Or is it that he's going to borrow? And the borrowing, we have the domestic borrowing and we have the international borrowing, whether we are going to IMF or we are going to the, the stock market. In the budget, all those things will be explained. And even in the budget, it will be explained how he's going to manage those debts. So that is why we are saying that the government budget is a blueprint of government expected revenue and expect uh, government expected revenue and expenditure for a financial year. So when we are saying a financial year, a financial year starts from January, first January to 31st December in a particular period. That is a calendar year. For example, first January. 2023 to 31st December 2023 will be a financial year. So in the in, in taxation, if we are saying financial year or year of assessment, we are, we are referring to the calendar year. So this budget, as I made mention, can either be we can either have a surplus budget or we have budget deficit. And in taxation, when we arrive at a budget deficit, it means that we can term that as constructionary physical policy, constructionary physical policy. And if we are arriving at budget deficit, 
we can call that expansionary physical policy. And where a situation where we are able to achieve a balanced budget, then we can call that moderate policy. Moderate policy. So these are the various, and I can say that Ghana, I can't remember the last time we have recorded either being it a balanced budget or budget surplus. It's always budget deficit, budget deficit. So the, which it means that that is the expansionary fiscal policy when it comes to taxation that Ghana basically we experience. So please, I will pause here. If you have a question, I will take it before I move to the impact of government and central bank physical and monetary policy. Basically, we, we are going to look at what fiscal policies are and what monetary policies are. So please, if you have a question, let me pause here and then take it before I move on. So let's, let's, get, let's make the class interactive because this area is an examinable area because uh, you get this when you move on uh, probably those doing public sector, you also see this in there, but we are looking at the tax aspect of it. So please, uh, if you have a question, let me take it before I move on. Please, any question for me? Or I can move on? Yes, sir, please, you can move on. Okay. So as I explained earlier now, we're now coming to look at the impact of government and central bank fiscal policy and monetary policy. So this, this is basically uh, what, uh, what you call the monetary policy sits with the Bank of Ghana. The monetary policy sits with the Bank of Ghana and the fiscal policy sits with the government, which uh, I made mention is represented by the Minister of Finance. So now, the monetary policy, it is the process, how the bank, uh, the central bank, that is the Bank of Ghana, manages the money supply and interest rate to, to achieve macroeconomic objectives. Macroeconomic objectives. Where if we may mention of macroeconomic uh, variables, we are looking at the inflation rate, the exchange rate, as uh, it, 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 it has been said, when the, uh, the fundamentals are weak, the exchange rate will expose you. It's basically this, and this is with the uh, Bank of Ghana, that's the central bank. They manage or control the supply of money and the interest rate. That is why we always, in taxation, as we are moving on, when you get to uh, computation of uh, interest, or probably penalties, you heard us mentioning of what Bank of Ghana root discount rate or Bank of Ghana uh, uh, monetary rate because it is Bank of Ghana that comes out with this monetary rate. That, that is why we are saying that physical policy is gets a procedure or a process by which a central bank, that is Bank of Ghana, manages the supply and interest rate to achieve macroeconomic variables. The reason why they are managing this is to achieve, the main objective is to achieve macroeconomic objectives. For example, control inflation, manage employment levels, and maintain financial stability. And maintain financial stability. That is why when uh, the exchange rate is not going well, they are always on the either the Bank of Ghana or the Ministry, the Ministry of Finance. Or the Ministry of Finance. So we have some main tools of monetary policies, which I want us to look at. We have the interest rates being one of them. So the central bank, which is the Bank of Ghana, influence the short-term interest rates through their policy rates, which I made mention of that this rate comes from the Bank of Ghana and they influence and they come out with short term interest rates. Lowering short term interest, lowering interest rate make borrowing easy. So if 
That is why when the Bank of Ghana comes out with the interest rate, the banks have to comply. So if myself and you go to the bank to take a loan, you see that now they, they, they will tell you that uh, four four percent either per month or weekly. And when you multiply that by uh, the, the days in the month and you try to move that to a year, you see that you are paying so much. And this comes from Bank of Ghana. So low, lowering the interest rate, it, it, it makes borrowing easy so that myself and you we can go for a loan and pay lower interest rates, which in turn encourage investment and consumer spending. Because if we are able to borrow uh, a loan at the cheapest interest rate, we'll be able to invest. Small scale, medium enterprises can go for loans to invest in their businesses. It will increase our spending. We'll be able to we'll have uh, our disposable income will now be high. So it will increase our spending. It will stimulate economic growth. So the economy will be booming to do well. And on the other side, when there is a high interest rate, it makes borrowing more expensive. It makes borrowing more expensive, which in turn slowing down inflation and cooling overheated economy. For example, if the economy is not doing well, if the economy is not doing well. So let's look at another one. We're we'll looking at main, the main tools of monetary policies. I made mention one being the interest rate, second being open market operations, which basically the central bank sell government securities in the open market to influence the money supply. And you see, this has to do with the T bills and other government securities being it bonds, where the Bank of Ghana will issue the the the, the securities and the what they call the citizen will buy. The citizens will buy that, which means that buying the securities inject money into the economy, increasing the money supply, and lowering the interest rate. And they can, when when they are selling, it means that they are also withdrawing money from circulation. That decreased decrease the supply of money or in, uh, higher rising the uh, what higher interest rate. So it means that the government can actually use this through the Bank of Ghana to direct the economy. That is what we are looking at. We are looking at fiscal policies, and we are saying that fiscal policy is how government that is government of Ghana is able to use her revenue and expenditure activities to influence the behavior of the economy. So you see both sides. If you are buying securities or you are selling securities, how government can be able to use that to influence the direction of the economy? We are looking at the reserve requirement as one of the main tools. And this tool indicates the minimum amount of reserve a bank must hold as against what? Deposit. And we, all of us were in this country where uh, when they were doing the banking cleanup, the, the, the capital requirement was 400 million Ghana cities. And I can tell you, some of the banks collapsed because they were not able to meet some of uh, some of these capital requirements. And some of them, they have to what, downscale them from bank to savings and loans because of this. So all this comes from the Bank of Ghana. That is the reserve that a, a, a bank should hold as against its deposit. Uh, deposit. So that is basically the main tools of monetary policies. The main tools of monetary policies. If there's a question you can ask so that I'll take it before I move to the impact of these monetary policies that we can experience as a country. Impact of monetary policies as a country. So please. Do you have any question for me? So I think at this point, no question. We are simulating. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Please, uh, Ima, uh, Sina Ima, is the class is the section recorded for 
them later or I, I just remember it. I don't know whether you have done yeah, that. Yes, it's been recorded. Ah, uh, okay. okay. Sure. Okay. That's fine. So let's look at the impact of monetary policies. Impact of monetary policies. So now we know what monetary policies are. Some of these things should be in the uh, fingertips. Because when you go to public sector accounting and finance, it is there. When you come to principle of taxation, it is there. So we have to know all this. What they say, uh, monetary policies. What are monetary policies? We have main tools for monetary policy, which are mid medicine, interest rate, the open market operations, all of them, you have to know them. Now, this th there's an impact that these monetary policies have, and one is economic growth. Economic growth. And when we make mention of economic growth, we are referring to the expansionary monetary policies. Expansionary monetary policies. That is low interest rate. And I may mention that if there's a low interest rate, we are able to borrow money at a, 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 a reduced interest rate, that money will be able to use to invest and will have more to spend. So it means that it will increase our consumer spending. So in, in that cell, this boosts economic growth by making credit more affordable, therefore stimulating what investment and consumer spending. Another another impact is the inflation control Infl inflation control and we, we are referring this as what the cons constructionary monetary policy constructionary monetary policy that is where the interest rate is high when the interest rate is high it helps control inflation by reducing consumer spending and investment because if there is a lot of money in the system, then high interest rate will what make it very difficult to actually go for loan. Because if you go for loan, it means that you'll be paying the interest at a higher rate. It is a way of controlling inflation, which will in turn reduce the what consumer spending because it will make consumers will not have the disposable income will not be enough for them to spend so much. And then businesses will not be able to borrow money to what? To finance or invest. The next one is employment. Low interest rates actually lead to what? Employment. Because businesses will invest these monies that they go as a loan to expand their business, which will increase demand. So as demand increases, it means that they'll be able to what employ individual myself and you will be able to get work to do because the business is doing well the business have been expanded and with what they will be keep credit keep our credit so that is a way monetary policy can impact on the economy we are looking at another one we will also look at is the exchange rate the exchange rate this relates to what change in interest rates affecting exchange rate, which in turn impacting international trade by making export cheaper or more expensive, whichever ways. When you are looking at it at high interest rate, it makes it more expensive. If you are looking at it within the low exchange rate, then it makes it very cheap. So that is what we are looking at when. We, we are trying to explain the impact of monetary policy on the economy. We are looking at the economic growth, we are looking at in, inflation control, we are looking at its ability to create employment and exchange rates as a final in, uh, point. So, please, if there's no question, permit me to go to what to, for us to look at the fiscal policies. So, the, that is the monetary policy aspect which. I made mention that this that one sits with the central bank, that the Bank of Ghana. So the more the fiscal policy, the fiscal policies involve basically the use of government spending and taxation to influence the economy. The use of government spending, how government spends, 
and how government raised revenue through taxation to influence the economy. And this primarily is managed by the government rather than the central bank, which I told you that the government uh, is basically in charge of the fiscal policy, but it is being championed by the Ministry of Finance. That is why we see uh, the, 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 the Ministry of Finance presenting the budget to Parliament. We, in public sector accounting and finance, we have something we call the um, policy strategic document. That's the Ministry of Finance always prepare and submit to cabinet for approval. That will enable them. And in that document, all these ones will be spelled out to be able to come out with, to collate all the budget estimates from the MMDs and MDAs. And when the budget, the final budget is being put as one, then the, the president must sign. So it means that the Minister of Finance go to uh, Parliament on behalf of what? The president. That is why um, uh, this guy, what is the name? Uh, Dr. Bawomia said, the, the budget does not go to Parliament in my name. The budget goes to Parliament in the name of Akufo Adu. So you see that that is why I'm saying that the fiscal policy sits with the government, but it is the Minister of Finance who champions the fiscal policy. So the fiscal policy can also be break down into expansionary poli uh, fiscal policy. Expansionary fiscal policy. If we say expansionary fiscal policy, what basically well, are we looking at? That is increasing what government spending and reducing or decreasing taxation to stimulate economic growth. Please don't forget what is the main focus. We are looking at fiscal policy. And what do you say fiscal policy is? Fiscal policy is how government uses her revenue and expenditure activities to direct the behavior of the economy. So let's look at expansionary fiscal policy. What is it? It's, we are saying that it is how government increases what it's spending or he, he either what reduce taxation to stimulate economic growth so whichever angle you'll be able to steer the economy either to le left or right that's what we are looking at in simple put so it, it is basically used during period of recession or economies slow down if the economy is not doing well and you see that basically what happening in Ghana right now, the economy is not doing well. So government have to either use one of this. And you, you can see that government expenses is going, we'll come and look at that. It's, it's increasing, but taxation is also a challenge. If government have uh, to use the expansionary fiscal policy, it means that he should have what? Increase spending and lower the taxation so that he can stimulate economic growth so that the citizen can be able what, to, 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 to afford so businesses can survive. Okay, so let's look at um, the constructionary fiscal policy. That is where you appreciate what is happening on, on, on grounds when it comes to economic uh physical policy so when we are saying constructionary fiscal policy we are looking at government decreasing what is spending or increasing taxes to reduce inflationary pressure when the economy is what overheat overheating so that's the two uh, type basically, uh, basically two types of fiscal policy the expansionary, which says that government will increase its spending and or reduce its taxation to stimulate economic growth. And the constructional fiscal policy is saying that government decreases its spending, increase taxes to reduce inflationary pressure. And you now ask yourself, which of this does government of Ghana uh, actually is practicing? Because we are increasing a lot of taxes uh, every day. We have exorbitant taxes 
all over, and then we are also having unnecessary spending all over. So you see that uh, I can say that uh, what we call we are, we, are, we are using a mix, but that is not what uh, we are looking at here uh, for the purpose of uh, ICA exams. Your uh, we our duty is to give you the knowledge for you to be able to pass. And then when you pass and now come, we'll be able to relate this to what is happening is in the real case. If it were to be a public sector paper, uh, we, some of this discuss, discussion will be much of importance. So please, let us let me go straight to the impact of fiscal policies. We look at, we, we, you know, when we're doing the monetary policy, we, we were able to explain the impact. Let's also look at how the fiscal policy will impact on the economy impact of the physical policies and we're looking at aggregate demand aggregate demand and what does that mean it means that the expansionary fiscal policy increases what aggregate demand by boosting economy uh, by boosting government spending and increasing disposable income for consumers because if they reduce, don't forget the expansionary fiscal policy is that government will rather increase his spending and reduce taxation. And when taxation is reduced, myself and you, the, the, our disposable income will increase. So we'll have a lot of money with us. Whilst the, const, uh, the constructionary fiscal policy, aggregate demand will reduce. Because if you have more money, we will be able to spend our, our consumption rate will increase. But the constitutionary fiscal policy is saying that governments reduce its spending and rather increase taxation. So if government increase taxation, it means that it will affect our disposable income. Hence, it will reduce its what? Aggregate demand. Hence, it will reduce aggregate demand. So that is one aspect of the uh, impact of fiscal policy. Another one is econ economic stabilization. Economic, this is a, a basic economics in the secondary school. The, and basically, this is to help stabilize the economy during business cycle, during difficulty, if the economy is in recession. And basically, what I was talking about, for example, is to increase uh, what spending during recession. This can help reduce unemployment and what stimulate the economy. That is one of the impact of fiscal policy. Another one is redistribution of income. And that is why Ghana were using the progressive taxation. I'm sure uh, what do you call your uh, your the if that have not been uh, treated or if that is looked at, they, you can get a question. To be, uh, they can ask you a question to explain and so what select the best tax system for either Ghana Revenue Authority or for a country. And we are looking at the direct and indirect. We are looking at the progressive and regressive. And then Ghana, we are using the progressive. What basically it means is that those who earn more, we tax them to what to help. So it, this that that's what we say pay as we end. The more you earn, the more you pay. The lesser you, 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 you earn, the lesser tax you pay. So we are taxing the more to support the poor. That's the basic understanding of progressive taxation. And social what? Social welfare programs. Physical policies can also uh, help to reduce what? Income inequality. That's why we're using the progressive. We'll come and look at uh, social importance of taxation. And one of them is to check the lifestyle. So if we see that we are living a, a, a luxurious lifestyle in the community, then it means that you will be required to pay high taxes so that we'll be able to what? use it to support the poor. When you finish and you come to the final level to meet us for advanced taxation, you, we have something we call the net worth, uh, which generally always used to determine uh, taxes in cases where 
uh, you you are you are not putting proper reports and then you are declaring either losses or something like that and you are driving G8 everywhere the GRE is obliged to use the net worth methods to assess you to tax and you are abandoning on that assessment so please please let's go ahead the, the last point on the impact of fiscal policy is public debt excess expansionary what fiscal policy can lead to high public debt level if not properly managed and impact long-term economic stability that is what is happening in ghana because we are seeing the government to what the expansionary fiscal policy is why government increases it was spending and reduces its taxation now if that happens it means that government is going to spend beyond what the government have and in effect or indirectly it means that government have to borrow to finance its activities because what the ghana revenue authority give government is not enough because this policy is saying that gov increase what government spending and reduce taxation so if we go and borrow and then we are we are now resorting to higher public debt and if it is not properly managed it will impact our, on our long-term economic stability. And that is what is happening in Ghana because we have crossed the red line. Ghana, the, our reputation is damaged. No country is willing to borrow us. You hear of uh, what else? Cocoa Boy. Any place they go, they don't want to give them loan because we're, Ghana is highly risky when it comes to uh, public debt. So please, um, I'll pause here if there is a question you ask before I go ahead, please. This area was examined by ICAG. It was examined by ICAG. Let's take note. Uh, I've pulled some of the past questions for us to look at after the class to appreciate whatever we are doing. So please, I, I would like it to take a question before I look at the type of fiscal policy that the discretionary fiscal policy and automatic stabilizers. Please, do you have any question for me? Hello? No, sir. Yeah, do you have any question for me? Please. Can I move on? Or you have a question for me? I always want to get a response. Please, you can move on. But I was... Please move on. Yeah. Like if you can maybe take your time a bit. I feel like it, you are being like... Right, so... I'm going fast. Yeah, you are rushing. Yeah, you are fast. Maybe oh, because... <laughs> Okay, we've no had problem. um slow teachers who take it slowly, so maybe we think you're going faster. I I think I don't know the rest of the team. Oh, okay, okay. That's a good feedback. Uh you have to I'll, because... I'll, I'll better we support you. <laughs> hey. <laughs> okay, okay, no problem, no problem, no problem. I will take it slow. That is why I always need a feedback from you so that but so it means that uh we can take we can continue with it or is it something that you don't you didn't get for and you want me to explain we can continue sir okay okay so let's look at the two types of physical policies one is the discretionary fiscal policies this deliberate change in government spending and taxation to influence the economy. So this it means that when there is uh, maybe if the economy is unstable or if the economy is on recession, then government will come in to stabilize it or government will come in to change the direction of the economy. That's what we mean by discretionary physical policies. It basically involves the intervention of policy makers or government. 
For example, that's basically to what? To either boost demand during recession. Please, if, if, if you get the discretionary fiscal policy well, then the second one should be easy for you. I'm saying that the discretionary fiscal policy involves the intervention of policy makers or government. That is the, the use of what? Government spending or taxes to influence the economy. So if they, for example, if the economy is not doing well, the government can come in to either increase its spending or lower taxes to stabilize the economy. So it, that the, the discretionary fiscal card policy always involve the intervention of government or physical policy and uh, physical uh, what you call um, policy makers. You're welcome. So uh, when it comes to the automatic stabilizers, the automatic stabilizers is the opposite of the first one. The, the automatic stabilizers simply means that. Automatically, if there is any recession or the economy is not doing well, the demand and supply would stabilize it, would bring it to equilibrium without the intervention of any legislative action or without the intervention of the government or intervention of policy makers. So it is built in mechanisms that automatically adjust the economy to be to be at stable. So, for example, if things are not going well, the prices in the market, government cannot come in, government cannot intervene. It means that this automatic stabilizer, demand and supply, will set the price, will bring the, the economy back to uh, what normal. So that is basically the, the the meaning of what automatic stabilizers it does not involve the intervention of government or policy makers for example let's say unemployment benefit and progressive income taxes that increase with what high income level so if for example if there is High, uh, let's say unemployment, and then we are using what the progressive taxes. It means that what, what we are saying is that those who earn more should pay more, and those who earn less to what should pay less. By way, it to what bring back, try to neutralize or try to bring the economy back to normal. So that is basically the differences between the discretionary fiscal policy and the automatic stabilizers. ICAG asks students to explain what uh, or the differences between discretionary fiscal policy and automatic stabilizers. Please, so let's take note. Please, is, 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 is this okay or you have a concern? I'm talking about the speed and then uh, maybe if you have, if you're not clear, you let me know before I, I proceed. Hello, sir. Hello, go ahead. And I said, um, I'm getting a bit confused, but I think maybe later when I go back to read, it will be clearer. Um, with the fiscal policy, you made mention that government uses its revenue and expenditure activities to influence the behavior of the economy. Yes. And with the monetary policy, it is a process by which the BOG manages the money supply and interest rates to achieve macroeconomic objectives. What yeah. I want to know is, yeah. are there activities intertwined? As in, um, and do they work together or they work independently? The reason why I'm asking is, when you check the activities of the fiscal policy, yeah. we are looking at objective full employment, 
So let's take it that maybe based on the activities, there's so much money in the economy for people to spend. Yeah. Or maybe I, I'm I'm not getting it. That's what I'm saying. I'm I'm a bit confused with the two. No. Um, you see, it, uh -huh. You, 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 <laughs> if you ask them the question, Graham, I don't know. With employment, full employment, and that physical policy, the objective, and monetary policy too, the activities that they do, we are using that to control the money supply. So what I want to ask is, when you use the example of interest rates and borrowing, you said that when interest rates are high, that yeah. means it will reduce yeah, the great. borrowing power of people. People might not be able to borrow much, and that may end up affecting the money in the hands of people. Yeah. I don't know if I'm right. Yes. Okay. So now, when you come that, there's going to be an effect on employment because businesses will not be able to borrow as they are expected or they want to. So at the end of the day, they might not be able to employ more people. Yeah. So it's going to be a negative effect on employment over there. Yeah. But when you come to fiscal policy too, I'm seeing something like employment here. I want to I want you to pick an example under fiscal policy that relates to employment. And when it comes to monetary policy, that relates to employment. So that I'll be able to distinguish the two in case of explaining. Fiscal policy. So, um, so basically, what what you are the the next effect the next effect is that under the fiscal policy, it sits with the government. Do you get it? So as yeah. you 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 were uh, so for example, if government if government increases taxation, it means that. Uh, the what you call, I think when we when we progress down, you will to get it. But let me explain. If government increases taxes, you get it. It means that businesses, the 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 the, the profit that they would have been able to plow back to expand their business, they will not be able to do that because they are hit by what high interest rates. For example, when you take the the, the VAT for example, uh, for example, you you are the VAT you are required to pay irrespective of whether you have made profit or not. So these businesses, one one way or the other, will not be able to do well. Which in turn they will not be able to what to employ, which will increase what unemployment rate. So another way is that if let's say. The, the the prices of input, the prices are of input. That is the raw materials. This uh, what these uh, uh, companies or these enterprises use. If the prices of input increases, it means that they will not be able to what to buy more to be able to produce, which means that productivity will be affected. Do you get it? When you come under the monetary policy, the, the, the interest rate is something that when you look at the, the capital structure of a, a business, it's made up of the, the, the equity and then borrowing. And borrowing. So to, uh, for us to be able to finance, for us to be able to expand, we we'll need additional capital. And the additional capital will rely on what? Borrowing. And this is the case. The, the, that sits with what? Bank of Ghana, that is central bank, which control this interest rate. So let's say in instances where there is a high interest rate, we will not be able to borrow, to expand our business or invest. In effect, we will have to even lay out uh, workers because we will not be able to cover our personal expenses or costs. Hence, high employment rates. On the other side, if there is low interest rates, it will have effect on what? The business, which it, it will intend what? Helping them to what? To inject a lot of 
unemployed graduates. Please, I don't know whether uh, the explanation is clear. Uh, it's clear, it's clear. But I want to just ask another thing. Why do you keep on saying under fiscal policy, the government, but when it comes to monetary policy, you still mm -hmm. emphasize on BOG. Is BOG not part of the government? BOG is part of the government, but don't forget, when I made mention of government, I my first submission, I said that it is the uh, finance minister that championed that. Okay. okay. On I behalf get of it. the government. It means that BOG also championed that on behalf of the government. Yeah. And don't forget, BOG uh, and the, 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 the BOG all goes under the Ministry of Finance. Sure. Yes. Okay. That we are, because we are looking of them, in this instance, we are looking at them as independent or want to get a clarity or a distinction between fiscal policy and monetary policy. I don't know whether I've answered your question. Okay, I appreciate it. Come again. So thank, thank you. I'm grateful. Thank you. I'm okay, okay. now. Okay, thank you. Please, any other question for me before I proceed? If there, if there's no question, let's look at uh, national and public debts and their implication on the national economy. So when we are when we are referring to national debt, it's basically the total amount of uh, the, the total amount of money the government owes to its creditors. And basically, uh, public sector accounting and finance, they'll say the total amount of, uh, the total amount of government plus all public guarantee debts. Total amount owed government plus all publicly guaranteed debts. What does that mean? It means that any government, uh, any uh, cover entity or any entity that government guarantee for that entity to go for a loan, it means that if the person defaults, it means it forms part of what? The national debt or public debt. That's why we're saying it is the total amount of debt owed government plus publicly guaranteed debt. And when we are looking at public debt, we are looking at both domestic and internationally. Because government can borrow domestically or borrow from international. Government can borrow uh, from uh, what we call the commercial banks or go to World Bank or IMF to borrow. That's why I'm saying that government can either borrow dom uh, domestically or internationally. So a simple put is that it is the total debt owed government plus publicly guaranteed debt. Publicly guaranteed debt. And I have to explain what, I, what is mean by publicly guaranteed. So let's look at the implication of this public debt on the economy. High interest payment. High interest payment of debt. Increased government interest liabilities. which will affect its ability to expand in other areas. It will, it will surprise you that we, we, we actually borrow to pay expensive debt. Or we borrow to, to, to we guess, let's say, if we are owing, uh, let's say, USA, uh, for example, uh, the example where we are, we are paying a higher interest rate, we can, and we can get a loan from China that uh, probably will be able to pay a uh, lower interest rate. China, we can just contact China to what? To pay off, to contact China to give us a loan to be able to pay off uh, what? USA, and then we'll be, we'll be able to deal with China to be paying the low interest rate. So in instances where we have high interest rates in the economy, it actually affects government uh, ability to, to what? To devolve other areas like the education sector, the health care sector, the infrastructure, among others. So that is uh, the implication of high public debt on the economy. High public debt on the economy. 
So we have the crowding out effect. What is this simple means? What is it saying is that high public debt can lead to a high interest rate as the government compete with what? The private sector for borrowing. This happened locally. For example, if uh, let's say the government goes to GCB to borrow, and then the uh, any private uh, enterprise also goes to G GCB to go to borrow, Be because if the the rate that they will give to government, they will, it's the same rate they will give to what the private enterprises, it will end up what tend to be a competition between the two. Which at the end, the government will be able to kick out the private uh, what person, and it will affect private investment, which will lead to what slow because the the economy is being operated by the public sector and the private sector, so the two have to be what to be able to do well. That is why in public sector, we are looking at the three E's. So that is basically that. Please, I'll pause here. If you have a question, uh, then you let me know before I proceed to inflationary, inflation rates, inflation rates under the implication of public debt on the economy. Please, can I move on? Hello. So the the crowding the crowding out effect. I didn't get it well. Yes, what I'm trying to say is that high public debt can lead to what high interest rate, and we are saying that the the well, you know I made mention of government borrowing domestically, and how will government borrow domestically? He can borrow from the commercial banks. So if government go to uh, Ghana Commercial Bank to borrow, and let's say Musa Enterprise also go to Commercial Bank to borrow, it will end up being a competition between Musa and then the government. And then in effect, it will, because government, let's assume that if government can afford, let's say, interest rate of 72%, there's no way Musa Limited being an enterprise will be able to service an interest of 75%. So in effect, it will what lead to what? Pushing the private investment gradually out or trying to what? Make it very difficult for the, the private sector to what? To borrow. Which will lead to what? Slowing down the economic growth. Because government, you are now, it's now government computing or competing with what? The private sector individuals or the private sector companies in terms of borrowing. Because all of us need money to finance our activities. Please, I don't know whether you get it. Yes, sir. it's good it's cool now. Okay, thank you. So let's look at the inflationary or inflation risks. Inflation risk. If the debt is financed by printing more money, it can lead to inflationary pressure. And this is what uh, recently, uh, if uh, our political flag bearers have been uh, mentioning that uh, uh, the Bank of Ghana have printed so much money to support this government. That is why today, there's, when you go to the market, the prices keep changing. Something you bought five cities, you go, they say 10 cities or 20 cities. Because if the debt is financed by printing money, this leads to inflationary pressure. This leads to inflationary pressure. And we also have credit rating and investment confidence. I made mention this when I started. Ghana, when it comes to credit rating, we are not doing well, very bad. The debt, 
debt to um, what well, debt to GDP ratio per the normal stress was supposed to be seventy percent, and it, it should not exceed seventy percent. It's the, the the normal should be thirty between thirty percent to sixty percent when you are doing public sector. If then you exceed seventy percent, it means that you have crossed the the what the red line. So if and Ghana have it's been double that. So our credit rating is poor. Invest investors don't have confidence in Ghana again. Ghana is a very risky country to invest. That's why we are saying that high public debt levels can effectively impact economic credit rating, making borrow, borrowing more expensive and potentially leading to a loss of what? Investors' confidence. That is basically what is happening currently in Ghana. Please, I'll pause here. If you have a question, I'll take it before I can I, I, I continue. Before I continue, please. Or else uh, I'll proceed with uh, government grants and international governmental transfers in relation to local government. Please, can I proceed? Yes, sir. Okay, so government grants as uh, which is uh, what do you call very common. This we are referring to funds provided by a high level of government. For, for example, the central government providing any grants to a local authority or the local government, which in that particular case, if the local government is not doing well, the central government can give a grant or transfer a grant to support the local government. And when we're seeking the local government, we're looking at the the district that is the MMDAs for specific purposes like education, health, infrastructure, or welfare programs. Welfare programs. Welfare programs. So we also have intergovernmental transfers, and this includes both conditions and conditionalities. Transfer of resources from central government to local government to help meet their physical responsibilities. So what this means is that the, the, some of the transfers, there can be conditions attached to them that you have to follow this condition. If you breach the condition, it means that you are required to pay back the grant. Or there are some of the transfers of the grant that require no conditions. And a clear example, let me use uh, IMF, for example. Well, when they give us conditionalities, tell us how you are going to manage your debts. Or pro probably they'll tell, they'll say, you know, some time ago, the Minister of Finance said the government pre rule have what? It's full. It's because of the conditionalities from uh, minister, uh, the IMF. Don't employ, public sector, don't employ. We are going to give you this transfer or this amount. So the, the, the central government can transfer to the local government and give conditions attached to those transfers. And some of the transfers can also go without what conditions. So it's, it's either you stay, those with conditions, you stay and you don't breach it. And those without conditions, you can spend anyhow you want. So let's look at um, some of the, the implications on some of these uh, instances where I want us to look at the local development, the local development, because, because this grant and transfers enable the local government to provide essential service and infrastructure development, social welfare programs, because the local people, maybe if they want to build, you know, uh, 
I I may I will always make reference to our politicians, uh, where but we can say we have able to build how a, a, this number of toilets, or we, we are able to do this. But these grants and transfers are to help the local government to provide these services. Maybe rules. Recently, the government talked about how they will do the rules and all those kind of stuff. Or social welfare programs. That will help without overburdening the local taxpayers. So that is one of the, the implications. Another one is the physical stability. That's which states that or basically is transfers that can help equalize or try to the, what, what the financial resources among different regions and promote what balance of regional development and reducing economic this parties so that so this the government the central government can also transfer to the what we call the local government in order to achieve this balance we have the this we have the independency risks that's over relying on central government transfers can reduce local government fiscal autonomy autonomy and accountability because if they don't generate their uh, what they call their own internal generated funds and they are just relying on the central government it's very risky what if the gov the central government is unable to provide that's why we are saying that potentially leads to what inefficiency and misallocation of resources so please i will pause here if you have a question we we'll look at it and we we'll now dwell into the most significant uh, some of these are past questions uh, actually that's what you'll be getting they will ask you importance or significance of taxation or taxation as a physical tool and at this point the reason why we actually want us to understand what fiscal policy is uh, the fiscal policy policy policies comes to look at the two the discretionary and then the automatic stabilizers and all those is because of this because you get the question where the, uh, the examiner is requiring you to explain uh, how taxation can be used as a physical tool that's how taxation can be used as a physical tool and if you have asked please if you have a question uh, let me know before i proceed or if I can continue, let me get a response from you. Hello. Please, can I continue or you have a question for me? Yeah. Yes. Please, you just mentioned that um, there can be a question of how is <clears throat> the, how does taxation play a role in fiscal policy? Can you come out with that statement again, just to get a clarity on the question? No, I, I'm saying that the examiner can ask you to explain how taxation can be used as a physical tool. And that is what basically we're going to look at now. That's what I'm saying that let's pay attention as we we move into these areas because these okay. areas are examinable highly examinable place places yes please so please can i move on as uh yes sir okay so when this case is presented to you then we we'll need to understand what fiscal policies fiscal policy is or the, the understanding, because the examiner will always want uh, to be in a layman shoe that he doesn't understand what fiscal policy is. So we are required uh, as students to introduce. 
And basically, we have something we call professional marks. When you introduce uh, one mark, so you are supposed to tell the examiner what fiscal policy is. So as I explained, fiscal policy is how government uses her revenue and expenditure activities in a bid to control the behavior or the direction of the economy. How government uses her revenue and expenses activity in a bid to what to influence the behavior and the direction of the economy. And I may mention the main instrument of fiscal policy is the government budget, because the government budget is a uh, what blueprint of government expected what revenue and expected expenditure in the a financial year. In the financial year. So in the budget, we we'll know how much government is going to generate, we we'll know how government is going to what finance its activities. So taxation play a critical role in fiscal policy since the major source of revenue for government comes from taxation. The major source of revenue comes from taxation. So government can easily direct the economy or the behavior of the economy through taxation. So let's look at how uh, government can do that. That's uh, economic importance of taxation. The question I, I ask. So you have to take note. I see what they do these days is that they have actually, there, there, there are no new questions. They just have to turn it to massages and bring the same question back. So you can get economic importance of taxation or taxation as economic tool or some objectives of fiscal policies using taxation is the same thing the examiner wants you to write. It's the same thing the examiner wants you to write. So let's take note. Economic, economic importance of taxation, that is one or taxation as economic tool, or some of the objectives of what? Fiscal policy using taxation is the same question. So how do you respond to this uh, during the exams? What, you have to go through these procedures. One is what? Government, through taxation, government raise revenue for what? Economic growth and development. Government raise revenue for economic growth and development through taxation. Taxation alone contributes 70 to 80 percent of the total government revenue. Because, and when we talk about this, it is being uh, divided. We have the indirect tax and we have the direct tax. And we can say that the indirect tax contribute about 50 to 50 percent, 50 to 50. 5% of the total tax revenue, of the total tax revenue. So basically, that is one of the economic importance or the ways government can use taxation as a fiscal policy to raise revenue for government in terms of what? Economic growth and development. Two, to protect infant industries, to protect infant industries, because we have, a, we are in a, a what you call, a, 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 a century that encourages uh, what? International trade. So governments can try to what? Impose heavy import duties. For example, if government wants to encourage uh, Kantanka vehicles, he can impose heavy import duties in relation to maybe any cars that comes into the country. So it will make it very difficult to import cars into the country. That would help what Kantanka uh, for Ghanaians to patronize Kantanka products or vehicles in a way, trying to protect this infant industry like Kantanka, because Kantanka cannot uh, compete with Toyota. He cannot. 
So it is a way government can use taxation, try to what? To change the direction. And that is why we are saying that one of them is what? He, 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 government does that just to protect the infant industries. And that is a typical example, I guess, gave. This has, however, not been achieved because of low quality product. Because maybe some of the uh, the product that uh, if government uh, probably instilled these heavy import duties, the local industries would not be able to get quality material to produce. Because maybe you are looking for a particular car that uh, maybe you can tanker is unable to get that quality material to produce the car that will meet your taste. So it makes it's very difficult to for this for government to achieve this as a physical tool. And lack of raw materials is also a challenge. Low level of technology. Low level of technology because now we are saying that we are going to bring uh, electric vehicles. So if we we actually uh, institute these heavy import duties, how many Ghanaian Automatic or automobile companies will be able to produce electric vehicles. So it means that we'll be lacking of lack of raw materials, low level of technology, and high cost of what capital. That makes it very difficult to for government to actually protect infant industries using taxation. Another point you can talk about is to arrest unemployment. To arrest unemployment. How would government do that? Government can reduce taxes on income that myself and you earn, which will increase our disposable income. And it will tend to increase what? Our demand. We will demand more. And it will what? Boost production. Because if we demand more, the businesses get more uh, income, they make profit, and they invest that profit into their business. Which will end what? If the, the, the productivity increase or production is boosted, more people will be required to do the, the, one, the work. Hence, reducing unemployment. Or the taxes on input can be reduced. To achieve the same effect. So it's either government look at it from the disposable income side or he look at it from the input. Where if manufacturing companies goes to buy uh, uh, the, the material, the input, then the prices, they will be subsidied. So if they, are, they buy at a lower cost, they come and produce. They will be they are able to produce and expand their production. They will require more hands to do the work. At the end, do employ more, hence reducing unemployment. So that is how government can use taxation as a physical policy or a physical tool. The three is uh, four is to what? To combat inflation. To combat if there's inflation in the economy, government can use taxation as a physical tool. And when we are saying to combat inflation, we are looking at two, two angles. One is the demand pool and the cost pool. The demand pool and the cost pool. What is mean by the demand pool? The demand pool, we are looking at inflation from the demand side. That is as a result of excess demand. So in, 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 in other words, we are looking at aggregate demand exceeding what? Aggregate supply. So if there is excess demand, then government, it means that we have more money with us, myself and you, we have more money. So how will government do that? Government has to what? Tax us more. You have to impose what? Heavy tax on our disposable income. Gets to reduce it. If you reduce it, it will indirectly what? Reduce the excess demand. So that is the demand side. And this is not used because 
high income taxes are not only immoral, but also what? Politically unwise. Besides, the formal sector is small as compared to the informal sector. Because GRA, I can tell you for a fact, it is very challenging if it comes to what? Taxation of the informal sector. Because myself and you, controller pay as or uh, a company which the GRA charge them to take the taxes, withheld this PAY and pay to them. Myself and you were, were deducted, we pay the tax on at source. But somebody at Abu or uh, uh, Coco P selling spare parts or something. He's not even registered with the GRA. Why, how is he going to pay tax? So you see, so that is the demand side. Let's look at the cost pool. Let's look at the cost side. And this, we are looking at the inflation, uh, inflation side, which is from the supply side. The supply side. And how will government do that? Government can reduce can reduce the tax on input of production. That is to grant what? Subsidy on this input. So if government grant a subsidy on input, it means that the businesses can buy this input at a lower prices. And when they buy it at the lower prices, they came and they, they, they bring it and they produce, which will end up what? Increasing their what their production and supply, hence reducing what prices. So if if you are asked the question how government can use taxation as a physical tool, then you are and you mentioned to combat inflation, you need to tell the examiner the two sides that the demand side and the, the what the cost side the, the demand pool and the cost push you have to try to explain the two sides okay so let's look at um the next point which is saying that to prevent dumping this phenomena is where a foreign seller sell goods and service at a higher price in her own country other than the foreign country. For example, a, let's say a supplier, a foreign supplier in the US sell a particular goods or service at a higher price. When it comes to Ghana, he gets sell it at a lower price because the aim is what? To kill competition in that country in order to gain monopoly in the future. In order to gain monopoly in the future. So to prevent dumping, basically that phenomena is guess, is talking about where foreigners sell goods and services at a lower price in their country. That is the, the foreign country. But at a lower price in, for example, Ghana. And the main purpose or the essence is what? to kill competition so that in the future, they can enjoy or gain monopoly. Prevention of dumping can be achieved by increasing the tax on such import heavily. By increasing the tax on such import heavily. So please, I'll, I'll, I'll pause here if you have any question. Well, I've, I've explained uh, uh, many of them. It, I think it gets left with some two. Those ones, um, I've, I think I've explained about five or six points. If you have any question, let me know and let me look at it before we move on. So please, that's what I'm saying. Take note of this area. The first one, what? The first one is what? Taxation as economic tool. The second part we are not coming is what tax incentives as economic to what uh, tax incentives as a tool of econ uh, physical policy. Tax incentive as a tool of physical policy. They are different. 
please i'll pause here if you have a question let me have it and then before we move on hello hello yes sir yeah is there any question for me or i can move on mm, say you can move on okay so if i i just want to get a response from you uh if uh the, let's say if the, the the principle of tax paper is today and you have been asked to explain how the government of ghana uh yes the government of ghana can use taxation as economic tool or as a physical tool what would be your response or in the simple put economic importance of taxation what will you say you can just give me the point i just want to get uh, a feedback as to whether or not we are all, all on the same page Um. Okay, sir. Okay. And uh, sir, yeah. so I think the first thing we can talk about is the um using taxation to address unemployment. Okay. To also protect infant industries. Yes, to protect infant industry. Okay, that's two. Uh -huh. And to raise revenue for government economic growth and development agenda okay that's good and then also controlling inflation both good. from the demand uh, the demand side and then also from the supply side that's, to, that's to prevent dumping yes to prevent dumping that's excellent yes. can also say to redistribute income to, redi to redistribute income it will be so so important Oh, okay. Ah, uh, this is economic important. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, please, can, 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 can I move on? Yes, sir. Okay. So now, let's look at uh, tax incentive as a tool of physical policy. Tax incentive as a tool of physical policy. Tax incentives... Please, please, let's let's try to mute if uh, if if we are not asking question I beg. So um we are looking at tax incentive as a tool of physical policy, and I'm saying that first of all we need to understand what tax incentives are, and tax incentives are by way are tax rubies, lower tax rate, tax concession tax exemptions that is being instituted or in, incorporated in the tax law to what? To help businesses reduces their tax burden. So it means that when we are saying that how will government use tax incentives as a tool of fiscal policy, we are looking at how government is going to use this uh, tax rubric, this lower tax rate, tax concession, and tax exemption available for businesses to be able to use that as economic tool or as what? A tool of fiscal policy. For example, you had uh, what you call all the political parties saying that, oh, when I come I'm going to scrap the e-levy, the bad tax. I'm going to scrap it. I'm going to give a uh, tax amnesty to uh, 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 Ghanaians. What they are doing, they are trying to use the tax incentives as a tool of physical policy. Please, all together. 
So even if in the exams, when they come and you forget, don't forget the, these politicians that sing every day. So please, let me, when we are saying tax rubit, what does tax rubit mean? Tax rubit, it means that having a discount on the tax rate. For example, if you are a tax, uh, a normal, per the, per the Income Tax Act 896, um, a normal business is required to pay tax at, I mean, your corporate income tax should be 25%. Now, we are saying that if you are into hospitality, that is hotel business and all those kind of businesses, you are, your corporate income, it should be taxed, it should be taxed at what? 22%. If you are into petroleum and mining, you are required to pay a corporate tax at 35%. So the, 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 that is lower in what tax rate. Now, the tax rubric aspect has to do with maybe by the location of your business, you are getting a reduction. As I said, it is a discount. It is a discount by reason of what your location. For example, if the law says that if you are a manufacturing company and you are located in Accra and Tema, you have no tax rebate. It means that you will be required to pay the 20% because you will not get a discount. So that is the meaning of what? Tax rebate. I've already explained lower tax rates. Where I made mention of hospitality, where you are required to pay corporate income tax rate of 22%. For um, a normal business pay 20, uh, 25%, uh, petroleum and mining pay 35%. And when we are talking about tax concessions, tax concessions are more or less tax holidays. And the law says that if you are into um, cattle farming, you have a tax holidays of what? 10 years, 10 years tax holidays. But the law requires that within these 10 years, you pay tax at a rate of 1%. But recently, it's been instituted or changed to 5%. So that is the meaning of tax concession. Basically, the tax holidays. What is tax exemption? Tax exemption is basically an amount that is what, or an individual that has been exempt from tax, from paying tax. And per our laws, it is only the minister responsible for finance who can exempt an individual or a person from paying payment of tax through they were the approval of parliament. That is why recently they were talking of if the, the tax exemptions were grant these multinational companies. It was a challenge. It's, it's a topical issue. So basically, that is the that is the meaning of tax exemptions. So please, I just want us to get the concept what it means. So if you are a tax student, you should know what tax rubric are. You should know what low tax rates are. You should know what tax concessions are. And you should also know what tax exemptions are. Please, all together. I want us yes, to get, sir. Yes, I, want, sir. I, want, I want us to get a concept before when I move on to this. To discuss these tax incentives, you, we are all on the same page. And that is at um, Prof's solution. The concept is the key because if you don't get a concept and we expose, we try to go through past questions or we say go and then solve past questions, you go and that past question is not there. You don't have the concept, you will not be able to produce or you will not be able to write. So, so you want to, yes. Okay. 
Um, you made mention of the tax rebate. I can yeah. see lower tax rates also there. Yeah. But from yeah. your definition, does it mean that with the tax rebate, it mm -hmm. can be lower or higher than the um, approved rate? That no, it cannot be higher. Maybe then. It cannot be higher. The, the okay. rebate um, is a discount. It is a discount on the tax rate. So it will be a discount on the 25%. Okay. I think when you were giving the example, you made mention of um, the hospitality being 22%. And you came to um, the oil companies or whatever, yes. 35. Yes. Uh -huh. That's sure. why I want to know that if the standard is 25 and one can go beyond it to 35 under okay. the explanation of the rebate, then if you can throw more light on that aspect. Yes, yes. So I think I was explaining the two simultaneously, the tax rebate and then the low tax rate but when i was concluding i i drew the the, the distinction uh clearly okay so what i'm trying to say is that the the root bit is a discount on the tax rate for example the normal tax rate corporate tax rate is 25 percent so when we're talking about tax rate there's no way that it can go beyond the 25 it will rather be less than the 25 it means that you have gotten a root bit. The reason being the location of your business. And the lower tax rate is the activity, the business you registered, what you are doing. For example, um, this is where the hospitality comes in. By way of you going into the hospitality industry, your corporate income tax will be taxed at 22%. By way of you going into petroleum and mining, your corporate income tax will be taxed at 35%. Please, I don't know how I've answered your question. Yes, I'm working now. Thank you. Yeah, thank you too. So please, um, am I getting any other question or I can move on? If I can move on, let me get a response before I move on, please. Please move on. Okay. So let's now go into the uh, how we are going to use tax incentives as a tool of fiscal policy. And one is location tax incentive. Location tax incentives. And the law says that if you are a manufacturing company, please watch. It's not any other company. If you are a manufacturing company, and because you are a manufacturing company and you are your location, where you you are located matters when it comes to taxation. When you when, by the grace of God, when you are able to finish or pass the part the level two, and you come to meet us at the final level, we'll look at tax planning. And we have variable of tax planning. And actually, uh, uh, the location variable talks about this. Because when you are going to do tax planning, you must know where to locate your manufacturing company because there are tax planning issues where you can be able to explore. So the, the, the reason why we are looking at this is because they are saying that we should look at, we should use tax incentives as a tool of fiscal policy. It means that government is going to use tax incentives to direct the economy. And how can he use the tax incentive to direct the economy? One, he's saying that your location, location, he has something we call tax, uh, location tax incentives. That if you are a manufacturing company and you are located in a particular place, he will give you tax incentives. And what, what are these tax incentives? The law says that if you are a manufacturing company and you are located in Accra and Tema, there's no tax rebate for you. So what it means that there's no you will not get any discount on the tax rate. If you are a normal business, you pay 25%. If you are... What that is when you are, uh, let's say, even if you are a manufacturing company in this context and you are located in Accra in Tema, 
you will not get the tax rubit. You will still be taxed at 25%. And uh, when you are located outside Accra and Tema, you have a tax rubit of 25%. So it means that you, you get a discount of 20%, 25% on your corporate tax rate. That would be the discount you get. Now, the law again says that if you are located outside the Accra Tema and other regional capital, in simple terms, if you are located elsewhere, like Bunkuru Yoyo, you have a tax rubit of 50%. I think somewhere when we were uh, doing our, at the time I was doing uh, ICAG, somebody when the after the, the class, uh, somebody a, a guy when they have their manufacturing company uh, in I think outside in Samoan side in Samoan, wrote to the commissioner general. They worked he worked to commissioner general and tell him that they, where their business is located, they are not supposed to pay the required rate, they're supposed to get a discount of 25%. So GRE have to come into agreement with the guy and tell him that going forward, they can now apply it prospectively because it cannot be done retrospectively. So now, when after you pass the principle of taxation, we it has been required for you to practice because you get this knowledge, you pass, finish, you have to make good use of it. So that is the basic understanding, which a simple put, a, any manufacturing company located in Accra and Tema, there's no tax rubit. Any manufacturing company located outside Accra and Tema, that manufacturing company will be given a tax rubit of 25%. If the manufacturing company is located outside Accra and Tema and the regional capitals, that manufacturing company will get a tax rubit of 50%. So this is just to encourage what development and improve infrastructure in, in terms of what the road, electricity, drinking water, among others. So please, that is uh, one of the ways government can use tax incentive as a tool of physical policy. So please, I'll pause here. If you have a question, let me take it before I move to agro, uh, agro processing companies. Agro processing companies. Agro processing companies. Please, can I move on? Or you have a question? Hello? Yes, go ahead. Yeah, I have a question. Okay. Yes, please. So um, reading from what you just said, Mm -hmm. If the company is cited, the manufacturing company is cited outside Accra and Tema and the regional capitals. So that includes uh, the Bogatangas, the Tamales, which are regional capitals. Am I right? Yes. yes. Okay. That's why I mentioned the Bunkrugu Yoyo. The Bunkrugu Yoyo is, is in Tamale inside. It did that. Uh, it's in that inside. That's why I mentioned Bunkrugu Yoyo. If you if if you guys finish and you come to the final level, or even I'm yet to see when we get to the computations, uh, see, uh, they can give you, it's mostly at the advanced level. They can give you a scenario with figures, and you have to compete. So you have to know that the the when they mention Bunkru Yoyo, you have to know that Bunkru Yoyo because it's a manufacturing company and it's located at Bunkru Yoyo. And the Bunkuru Yoyo is outside Accra Tema and then the regional capital, they have a tax rubit of 50%. So you have to calculate 50% on the tax rate. And that will be the discount on it. Before you use that one to calculate their what? Their corporate income tax. Those ones will be demonstrated to you when we get to uh, areas that uh, require computations. But I can state emphatically that it's been done at the advanced level. When we are doing tax planning, they can give you the, the data for you to do uh, analysis and advise management whether or not or which areas should they uh, cite the manufacturing company. 
Please, I don't know what I have to answer your question. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you too. Okay, if there's a question, I take it or I move to agro processing companies. Agro processing companies. So agro processing companies is just an extension. Uh, if the law is saying that if you are going into agro processing, you have also incentives. And what are the tax incentives? We are saying that you have a tax concession, that is a tax holiday of what? The first five years, if you start your agro processing business, for the first five years, you have tax holidays. And you only pay tax at the rate of what? That is why we call it concession at the lower rate. That is 1%. And I may mention that now it is 5%. That is why it is concession. So it means that within that holiday period, you will be required to pay a low, get something a little to the government of Ghana. So for those established in other regional capitals, that is outside Accra and Tema, and outside Northern Savannah Ecological Zone, the tax rate is 15%. That is after the what the five years of operation that this rate you apply it after you have exhausted your five years because the law says that after the five years uh, when you start the first five years you 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 that is what your holidays period so after the five years then if you are an agro processing company and you are located or established in other regional capitals, aside Accra and Tema, and aside Northern Savannah Ecological Zone, the tax rate, the corporate tax rate after the five years will be 15%. And those outside other regional capitals will be taxed at 10%. Others outside regional capitals will be taxed at 10%. And those in the Northern Savannah Ecological Zone, their chargeable income will be taxed at the rate of 5%. So the, those outside at, uh, other regional capital will be taxed at 10%. Those in the Northern Savannah Ecological Zone will be taxed at 5%. So it starts from 15, 10, and 5. That is if you are agro processing company, you have a tax holiday period of five years. After the five years, whichever place you are located, you'll be taxed at 15%, 10%, and 5% respectively. So we, have, we also have the activity tax incentives, activity tax incentives. And that is, activity is basically the the activity you are undertaking the particular business you are you are registered to operate you will get an incentive so we call it the activity variable if we are looking at tax planning tax planning well, so tax planning we have variables that make the tax planning very easy we call it the short uh, form is late we have the allocation variable, we have the, the, the activity variable, we have the time variable, and we have the entity variable. That's what I'm saying, that when you come to the final level, we'll look at this more into details. But now, for what you are supposed to know, you are supposed to know how this tax incentive can be used as a physical tool. And one is the activity tax incentives. And this arises where there exists what? Tax incentive and pursuing a particular activities, especially agriculture, is the main study of what state of what the economy. And what why are we saying uh, what called agriculture? The law says that the income of a cocoa farmer from cocoa is exempt from tax at the our university. 
this one we are we, we are only thinking income of cocoa farmer from cocoa is for exempt from tax that is section seven of uh section seven of the income tax at a96 when you go there you get exempt incomes and the income of a cocoa uh, income of a cocoa farmer from cocoa is exempt from tax is from section seven of the income tax at a96 so we're also looking at Let's say if if you are registered as livestock business, other than cattle, cash crop, you have five years tax holidays. Livestock, other than cattle, cash, other than other other than cattle, you have. If you are going into cash crop cash crop you also have five tax and uh, five years tax holidays five years tax holidays if you are going into cattle farming you have 10 years tax holidays but within this period as i mentioned one if you are into livestock other than cattle five years holidays if you are into cash crop you have five years tax holidays. If you are into cattle rearing, you are cattle farming, you have what? 10 years tax holidays. Within this concessional period, within these tax holidays, you are required, as I made mention initially, that you were, the, this particular uh, activities pursued was supposed to be taxed at 1%. 1%. And currently, is now been changed to 5%. So note, however, that as in the income tax at 2015 at the NI6, a concessionary tax rate of 1% will be imposed during the what the whole day's period. So in this case, it will be 5%. Okay. We have the free zone. It's also an area that government, the government have provided uh what do you call tax incentives in there that government can use it as a physical tool that government can use it to what to direct or influence the economy and what are these tax incentives we are saying that the free uh, the free zone act 1995 act 504 says that If you if you are operating in the free zone for the first 10 years from the date of what Com commitment, you will not be required to pay tax. That's what the tax uh, the act is saying. So it's a way of what trying to influence people to go into the free zone by way government is trying to direct or influence the behavior of the economy. And then the income tax rate after the 10 years will be 15%, will be 15%. And see, recently, uh, senior uh, Ima posted, uh, um, uh, what do you call, um, a, 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 a ruling by the commissioner general. You know, initially, any dividend that is paid out of the free zone is exempt from tax. The normal, uh, what do you call, instances, any shareholder that is paid dividend, that dividend is subject to withholding tax at 8%. So to encourage people to go into the free zone, it was being explained that any dividend that arises from the free zone to any shareholder is exempt from tax. And now, GRA is uh, of a, a position that Section 28 of the Free Zone Act 1995 of Act 508, that particular act is, incons is inconsistent with Section 136 of 
the Income Tax Act. And therefore, the section 136 has repealed section 28. In, the, in, 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 in summary, it means that now going forward, any dividend that is arrived from the free zone is subject to tax. Please let me pause here and take questions before I move to social, uh, social significance of taxation. This is the social importance of taxation. Please, I'll pause here and then take questions, please. Please, do you have any question for me? Or well, I can move on. Yes, sir. Yes, move sir, on. please move on. Okay. So now let's look at the social importance or so, social significance of taxation. I think one of us mentioned redistribution of income, real income. That is, uh, that is, uh, and I said it. That was the social uh, importance of taxation. So redistribution of income is one of them. This is basically, uh, as I mean, mentioned the progressive taxation, in the sense that. We want to tax those who are rich to help those who are poor. That's why we have the concept that pay as you end. The more you pay, uh, the more you end, the more tax you pay. And the less you end, the less tax you pay. That is what uh, Ghana we are practicing right now. So it's way of what? Redistribution of what? Income, taking from the, the rich to help the poor. That's a simple put. Two, to cut down on the production and consumption of harmful goods. How do we do that? That's imposing what heavy exercise duties are used on what? Import duties on what? Goods that is harmful. For example, if they if they tell you the amount of uh, marijuana and uh, those tobacco products, if they tell you the the rates, the excise duties on those ones, you marvel. These are alcoholic beverages. But my brother, it is still on the high. But the social the social importance of taxation is to cut down on the production and consumption of what? The harmful goods. And then the almighty checking of uh, what? What do you call? I mean, mention of lifestyle here. It is social importance. This is done by imposing heavy tax taxes on goods consumed by the rich. So any uh, those saying at Transaco and East Legon, if we know the goods they consume, then we can uh, by way. If we want the government want to direct or uh, influence the economy, he can impose heavy taxes on the goods that these particular individuals are consuming. Hello, because, sir. Mm -hmm. Is this practicable in Ghana now? My dear, it is not practical. See, Ghana, the things we have, they are on books. They are not. Ghana, you see, Ghana, honestly, I'm not a politician, but let me make this statement. We are making, the, we try to make the laws to favor the rich. Mm. Why am I saying that? You know, previously, the individual tax rate, which we term as the graduated tax rate, yes. the last bracket was 35%. 35, yeah. They came and changed it to 30. Mm -hmm. They changed it to 30 simply because they were falling in that bracket. Mm. Then it didn't even take some time. Now they have introduced you back. Currently, the last bracket is 35. Mm. I'm sure the next government or the next time we hear, they'll bring it back to 30 again. Even they can mm. even reduce it to 25. Because yeah. it is selfishness. Mm. Because we are saying that we are operating progressive. And the progressive, the basic understanding is that those who earn more should pay more. Yeah, you pay. 
so that we help those who are poor. Yeah. So this particular star, actually, you see, it, it, the reason why I'm saying that it is not practiced uh, currently in Ghana is that it is very real. And then mostly mm -hmm. it's used by the Commissioner General. Mm. Yes. For example, if uh, I think there was a case in uh, WA, why Commissioner General... So in this particular case, what Commissioner General would do is that he will use the net worth method as a method. So actually, it was an insider who gave the information to Commissioner General, and then they sent their guys to go and study. So you see that you realize that Accra, those in Accra, you see that Commissioner General people will come and sit in your shop. Yeah. Just to monitor. There is a reason. So yeah. actually, he sent his guys to go and monitor. They were there. So they want to see in the good day how how much is the guy selling the food in the bad day, and you know the the funny thing, the guy was not smart. He only issue bad invoice when he sells an amount of let's say seven thousand, eight thousand mm. those days. So when they sent him the the letter to come and do the tax audit, mm. that actually they were going to examine the VAT. The the what their main focus was the VAT. Yeah, they were not able to get proper documentation, so they have to call for his bank statement. Mm -hmm. That is for the the enterprise. Mm -hmm. So it means that they are going to get look at the inflows that come in, mm -hmm. plus whatever information they have physically. So that's the network uh, method. So based on that, they will make an informed decision to determine the person uh, tax liability, and they slap in a huge tax. Meanwhile, on the real case, the guy was not making profit. Yeah. So it is it is it is not real. It's only the GRE sometimes that trigger this. Mm -hmm. huh, but for it for it to be practicalized, uh, my my dear, it's not happening. If it is happening, like we all see it. The only instances where they were trying to use this one was when they said uh, let's say if you use a vehicle capacity of at some level. You remember they brought something like that out some time ago. A luxury tax. Come again. A luxury tax. Yes. So that, that it was also from this particular angle. Just to take money from the rich. Aside that, <laughs> what we have is in the books. We don't practice them. Please, I don't know whether I can move on. Yes, sir. Okay. So now, um, so now, let's look at the next one. The next one is provision of social amenities. Provision of social amenities. Tax revenue could be used to provide social amenities to the citizenry. For example, extend electricity to areas that there's no electricity, maybe provide drinking water, build toilets and others. We can actually get those social amenities to communities by raising tax revenue to finance that. So please, that is the social importance of taxation. If there is a question, let me take it before we move to. So you see how I'm going through by the, the things. That how the questions are going to come. First one was uh, taxation as economic tool. Second was what? Tax incentive as physical policy. Do you get it? Now, we get to look at the social significance of taxation or social importance of taxation. Now, we are now coming to look at the goal of public expenditure. Don't forget, we said Fiscal policy is how government uses her revenue and expenditure activities. We are done with the revenue. We are now looking at the expenditure activities. 
and we have this expenditure activity. We said we have something we call the expansionary physical policy. Don't forget, we said government can increase its spending and reduce revenue. So that is a way of what? Government, that fiscal policy using spending. They can bring the question like that, or they can say the goal of public expenditure. That's another way they can bring the question. Or what is the positive effects of the expansionary physical policy? The reason why I'm bringing all this out is that I have, if you check, when you finish, check the past questions. They will get massaged. Let's say if the, last year they brought, they said the goal of public expenditure. This year they will say that physical policy using spending. Next year they will say pos, uh, pos, uh, positive effect of expansionary physical policy. Do you get? So that's why I always want to us to get whichever way it comes, we should be able to what to get it clearly and then attend the question. So please let's uh, go ahead and look at the positive effect of the expansionary fiscal policies. Uh, one is what uh, provide social goal. Provide social goal. That is the 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 the, the theory of social goal is of primary importance to economic sec uh, to the economy of public sector. That is uh, what we call. So the social goals are divided into two headings. We have the social and economic overhead. So we are now uh, dual, uh, trying to dip this into the public sector, which we are saying that uh, this, what do you call, this goals, social goals are divided into two. Why we are having the social and economic overhead. And the social overhead basically talks about expenditure that have to do with the hospitals, schools, colleges, and technical in institutions. And then the economic overheads have to do with things like the roads and the highway, irrigation and power projects. So government spend these monies to provide what social goal. Don't forget we are looking at the goal of public expenditure or fiscal policy using spending or positive effect of expansionary fiscal policy. So one is provide social goals. And I've explained the social goals are being separated or divided into two. We have the social and economic overhead. And why the social talks about the hospital, the schools, the colleges, and the technical institutions. And then the economic talks about overhead like this road and the highways. Please, that is that. Another one, government also spend to increase production. Increase production. So public spending contribute to production through a large number of public enterprises. That is both industries and agriculture. Government actually incur a lot of costs in the agriculture sector. That is irrigation, and then uh, what power? Recently, there was a case where the government spent twelve million U.S. dollars on the Palgo multi-purpose dam, where they are saying that there is nothing there, and the MPP are saying that the twelve million uh, dollars was actually the architectural work, the paperwork. So government actually spend on these things, on irrigation and power projects, seed farms, fertilizers, warehouses, federal roads. They are all things that government spend her money on. In the industrial sector, government also set up public enterprises like the steel plant, 
and heavy electrical or engineering. So that is how government can come in to what to increase production through spending, through public expenditure. So let's look at uh, promote price stability, promote price stability. Increasing public expenditure relieve the economy from depression. Because if the economy is very hard, so it means that, okay, so let me ask this question. If you were following me, so they are saying that if the economy is at depression, the, the government comes in to spend, to bring it to its equilibrium or to stabilize it. So in that case, is it discretionary fiscal policy or it is automatic stabilizers? Who can answer this for me? Is it discretionary fiscal policy or automatic stabilizers? Discretionary. Good. Good. Discretionary. Yes, that's it. Because we are saying that that one, it involves the government or policy makers. But the automatic stabilizers does not involve the intervention of the government or policy makers. It's the inbuilt mechanisms that bring the economy back to normal. In a simple put, it is the demand and supply that set the prices. So in this case, it's the discretionary. So the government can actually come in to ensure that he spends to promote price stability, to bring the price to its normal, to its normal. Government also spend to create employment. Government also spend to create employment. Expenditure is the most weapon to fight unemployment because the level of employment depends on what? Upon aggregate demand. Because if we don't have a lot of what? Monies. We, there's no way that we are going to demand whatever the, 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 the companies are producing. And if we don't demand, they will not what? Be able to sell and make profit. And if they don't make profit, they are no, there's no way they are going to employ. And if they don't employ, there's no way uh, uh, unemployment will reduce. Do you get it? So the government have to what? To now come in and spend. Because he's spending simply to what? To create employment. And the, the government can influence either by making more expenditure or by sorting to what? Physical method. That is by raising the level of a private expenditure. As the government tries to also what create employment opportunities. Do you get it? So the government can either create em employment opportunities or he takes uh, the other level that the private expenditure leg where he have to maybe mix input price of input lower or try to come in and give them subsidy, uh, maybe uh, fertilizers or those kind of stuff to just uh, encourage this particular uh, objectives to be achieved. So when the question is asked, look at how you are going to uh, try to explain this, that government spending will be able to result in creating employment. We have promote balance growth promote balance growth there's a tendency to in, to what to use economic resources for further development of already developed regions already developed regions so government sometimes it's required to use huge amount of what resources to place on devolving certain regions that have 
already been devolved. That's why sometimes we government cannot say that because uh, what it call a Christ already devolved, he is going to deprive them from their needed uh, share of the national cake. Okay. So we have to reduce inequality of income. To reduce inequality of income. So government also ensure uh, what? Public spending rather to reduce inequality of income. That is the another objective of what? Public expenditure to re public expenditure. So public expen expenditure on old age pensions. You know, we have uh, some is it leap program? There's a, a term for it where government support the poor, those who are uh, aging over 70 or 60 years, they give them money for free. And then there's also free education and then free mid-year meals. Government spend in all this to make sure that he reduce the inequality, the income inequality, the income inequality. And it benefit the poor class in the community at the expense of the rich, at the expense of the rich. So please, that is that. If you have a question on how, uh, what do you call, the goals of public expenditure or physical policy using spending or positive effect of expansionary fiscal policy, please, uh, you can let me know or else we move on uh, to look at the constructionary fiscal policy. So you see, we look at, we, we, we have finished the positive effect of what? The uh, expansionary. We are now looking at the adverse effect of what? The constructionary fiscal policy. The constructionary is saying that government should increase its tax revenue whilst reducing its spending. So let's look at that its effect, its effect on the economy. Please, you have to understand because they can ask you the disadvantage and uh, that this is the disadvantage the advantage of the constructionary fiscal policy and you should be able to 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 to, to explain because the constructionary fiscal policy is saying that it involves increasing tax revenue whilst either maintaining or cutting the level of government spending that will result in what bucket surplus but ghana will never obtain bucket surplus before I uh, since I think since uh, let me say since I was born. So please, uh, do you have any question or I can move to the adverse effect of constructionary fiscal policy on businesses? Hello. Do you have any question for me? Hi. Can I move on or no, you have a question? Sir, yeah, please, you can move on. Okay. So, reduce. So, we're looking at the effect of the constructional fiscal policy on businesses. That is to say that the constructional fiscal policy is government increasing tax revenue and reducing its spending. Let's look at how it will affect the businesses. And we're saying that reduce in the sales revenue and consequently profit and it's true because the construction of fiscal policy involves increasing in income tax rate reducing our disposable income like myself and you our take home will reduce if our take home reduce our aggregate demand will fall how we buy things will fall if we used to spend 4,000 on our family budget. We cannot spend 4,000 again. We can spend 2,000. It means that our demand has fall, fallen. With other factors of demand remaining what? The same, constant. Hence, reduction in disposable income will result in reduction in demand for goods and services. So you see, it means that 
the demand for goods and services that are provided by these businesses will fall and it will affect their productivity. That is in terms of sales, the reduction in sales revenue and then that of their profit. That's why we're saying that one of the points is reduction in sales revenue and consequently profit. Second, the second point, the second point, reduction in profit that can be reinvested. Reduction in profit that can be reinvested. What does it mean? If we are saying that it is an adverse effect of the constructionary fiscal policy, it means that increasing the income tax rate will take more cash from the business. For example, the VAT now is what? 21%. Do you know the fifteen percent initially was twelve point five? They get brought to back. Oh, please! You didn't notice that it was twelve point five. Hello. Yes, sir. I hope we noticed that it was twelve point five, and now they have changed it to fifteen again. Yes, please. Yes. So it brings the total percentage to 21. Even if it is a uh, hospitality, it means to be 22 percent. That is so high on the half and the, on the part of what the businesses and the the profit that they have made, they should have what reinvested, plow back. But all these taxes are and need to be paid. Even the VAT, the VAT are be, are supposed to pay irrespective of whether you have made profit or not. So the available cash for this uh, on these businesses will reduce, and the cash available for their operations will also be reduced, and they cannot reinvest this income because they have, they have, the the funds that they have invested is being used to pay taxes. Firms have to raise monies from external sources with high costs, and it is also risky. They have no option than to go and borrow. Okay. Another one is re restricting on flexibility in taking credit decision. You are saying that government should, the uh, constructionary fiscal policy is that increasing tax taxes and reducing government spending. So if government increase uh let's say high sales of consumption tax rate that's the but it reduces the business flexibility to grant credit because the VAT, as i stated is paid regardless of whether payment has to be received from customer or not and business that grant credit for longer period that the grace period for payment of the consumption taxes over the tax authority to, over the tax authority will have to what to pay the amount from their own resources or they have to borrow funds to pay so you see how it has what actually restricted the ability in taking a credit decision because of the what the high tax rate Reducing profit offense facing price elasticity demand. Price elasticity demand because of uh, this indirect taxes, the VAT, the excise duties, if they are on the high side, the firm faces price elasticity demand. And absorb what? The firm have to absorb the additional cost and risk lowering what profit or have to pass that to the consumer at the high price. That's why the indirect taxes, they have to push it to the consumer, myself and you to pay. That is the, the, the what you call, the VAT and the rest. Reduction in loanable funds, reduction in loanable funds. 
Contracts now fiscal policy reduce disposable income as I mentioned, and households have a little left to save in, in, in the bank or invest in securities. So this go a long way to reduce our aggregate demand in resulting in what? Reduction in inflation interest rate, and must drop and cost of capital will be low. So please, uh, if you have a question, let's look at it. This gets a summary of what we explained earlier. Uh, the construction of fiscal policy can be used to achieve the following objective by the government in general. So we, so we are looking at economically to combat inflation through increasing taxes on income, protect infant industry through high income, ta uh, income duties, prevent dumping through high import duties, con conserve the foreign exchange position through high import duties, and to run government administration machinery. On the social side, that's to redistribute income, to cut down the production and consumption of harmful goods, to check lifestyle, to provide social amenities, and to rise society of unwanted goods from others. So please, that is uh, what we call that. If you have a question, let me know. Let me know. I think I have already explained this, the automatic stabilizers. I've explained the automatic stabilizers where I'm saying that the economy, uh, the inbuilt, mechanisms have to what to stabilize the economy without the intervention of the government or policy makers or individuals. I have to explain this. So you have it here. We have the discretionary, that is where the government has to intervene or policy makers. So the expansionary fiscal policy so please, uh, I'm waiting for a question before I look at these two areas. Please, if you have a question, let me take it. Hello. Yes, sir. Any question for me? Oh, just to ask. So, um, with the handouts that are, is ready for sale, we have all of this in the handouts. Yes, yes. Okay. All these things have been guest pool from Prof. Uh, Book. Okay. Sir, is this the only part? Um, is this the only um the only class you are going to have about the fiscal policy, or? Yes, I think that is what for for the news levels that we we are supposed to look at. Maybe if you want us to look at other aspects, then uh, we can uh, take that up. Do you have any? No, no. Hello? Can you hear me? So we yes, can sir. Hear you. Come again. We can hear you. Yes. Uh, he, he was asking a question. So I want to... uh, so yeah, so, um, it, that is all that I know. I, I'm okay with this one. I'm okay with this one. Yes. Yeah. Okay. 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 So that's what when you after the class, you can check on the new syllabus. This is what we are supposed to look at. And that's where the, the questions are. Mostly the, the question will be coming from. 
and because uh, you have a uh, prof manual everything is being stated there clearly after the class you can go through and then make uh what you call ref refer to them and i think uh you might to make the recording available as well all right sir thank you yeah thank you Please, can I proceed? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. So let's look at the expansional fiscal policies as I explained earlier. So you need to know this very well because it's an area that can come. And basically, it is government increase in government expenditure and decrease or decreasing taxes that cause the government bucket deficit to increase or it baguette surplus to, dec to decrease. And it is known as physical losing. We have physical we have instruments that are used in physical policies. Principle of taxation, anything is possible, they can ask you to mention the uh, uh, various instruments used in physical policies. And these are the things you should uh, be telling the examiner, these ones. Um, government budgetary surplus and deficit, government expenditure, public debt and taxation. Public debt and taxation. So let's, I guess one has to go, guess, appreciate what we did today before we bring the class to an end. These are past questions. And uh, we encourage that we get past questions uh, from 2016 to date, principle of taxation uh, to solve is the is past question solution. And that you'll be able to understand and appreciate how the questions are being asked and how the questions are being answered. Because at the end, they are going to bring the same question back, but they will just recycle them. So that is uh, that. Because that this is a technique that uh, Prof taught all of us. I think when I was uh, doing uh, Chartered Institute of Taxation exams, this was a strategy Prof Prof Bills gave me, and then I I actually use I saw from 2017 to date that CIT quest past questions, and uh, it actually worked. I didn't know uh, the strategy well, but I guess okay. Let me practice what Boss Bill was telling me. When I did it, and then at long last, I, to my surprise, I have to get an award in that particular year. That was 20, November 2022. So please, it works. After getting the concept, go and solve past questions. Go and solve past questions. You'll be able to appreciate how the questions are asked, how the questions are answered. So when you go to the exam hall, what we say is that Immediately you are thinking in the exam hall, know that you are feeling. We don't think in the exam hall, we write. So that is why this is the time for you to think, to go through the past questions. Sit down and then study. Go and answer the question. Go and get see how they solve the past questions. And you'll be fine. So please, I again want us to just run through some of the sample of the, uh, the past questions. I think these are in... I see what I and then Prof have also included this from topic to topic. When you get his book, uh, each topic like fiscal policy, you see all the past questions that ask I see have asked, and then the solutions, and he have bring incorporated uh, CIT questions into them. So it is a book that is a must buy book. It's a must buy book. Okay, all of us are using that book, so uh, you see how important that book is so please let's look at november 2016 question two what the examiner was asking the students to do they are saying the current level of government borrowing has become a topical issue for discussion causing observers to wonder whether borrowing is good or bad in the light of this you are required to 
I. Evaluate the effects of borrowing on the economy of Ghana. Please, is that not what we did when, when we started? Hmm? Or yes, that is not what we were, we were explaining. Yeah, we've we've talked about that. Yes. And the, the, the II is saying that discuss how taxation can be used as a physical tool. In physical policy, please. This yeah. one they can bring it as discuss uh, how uh, or uh, discuss the economic importance of taxation in physical policy. It's the same thing, or oh, it's not the same thing. It is. Yes. So that's how they, they'll just take the question and massage them and bring them back. When you read the examiner's comment, the civil examiner, they'll tell you that if students don't read past questions, because these particular questions were examined last sitting, students didn't know, they were not able to pass. Those reading public sector, when you go and look at February, I think, March 2020, is it 2024 or 2023? The chief examiner said 52% of the, the question that was asked in that sitting actually came from past questions. It was stated specifically at the chief examiner's report. So please, let's get the past questions. We have given you the knowledge. We have also shown you the way. The way is past questions and solutions. And bills have done that job for you. What you need is to just get the book. You have the concept in there. You have the past questions in there. Okay. Let's look ICA May 2018. They are saying that the decision to change the level, composition, or timing of government expenditure or to vary the burden, the structure or fre frequency of the tax payment is a physical policy. Physical policies could be stabilizers and uh, automatic stabilizers or discretionary requires explain automatic stabilizers and then discretionary physical policy is that not what we, we were talking just recently yes please yes you know when they ask this question that particular 2019 ICA 29 uh, uh, ICA May 2018 uh, students were explaining that automatic stabilizers are uh, 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 the generators that they have done what were what, what, like or machinery, the machinery that they were just trying to dangle around it. Because they, they didn't really understand what it means by automatic stabilizers. So from today, I, I want to believe that all of us here know what automatic stabilizers are and then how different that is from discretionary fiscal policy. Okay, uh, let's look at this one. I think that's, okay, we guess I have some few to look at. They are saying that public debts enable government to invest in critical areas of the economy where the capacity of tax revenue to undertake this project may be limited. In situation where printing additional money will disrupt the stability of the economy. In, it permits an equitable alignment of benefit and cost for long-term gestation just, project by shifting, taxation, by shifting taxation away from current generation. Required, what is public debt? I have to explain what public debt. Get five marks, my brother, my sister. Five marks, three public debt. Two, that's II. Critically examine public debt as an alternative to taxation and its effect on the economy. This is very simple. You just look at the uh, what you call the importance of public debt as an alternative, like for go government going for borrowing as an alternative of what? imposing Tax. high taxes on the citizens. Please, all together. 
Yes, sir. Yes. And this one, 10 marks free. 2019, what, what the question one? They were asking students, that economists, hmm? let me get rid of the requirement. They said, describe five purposes of taxation for an economy such as Ghana. In this instance, you can mix them. They, both the economic important and the social important. Yeah, yeah. You, can mix, you can mix them because they actually didn't specify. Yeah. A, a student that wants to demonstrate much knowledge in taxation can actually segregate them, the economic importance and then the social importance. Then my advice to students is that if you go to the exam hall and want to demonstrate your knowledge to, 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 to say that you know, you end up failing. Okay? We encourage students to list more points and explain a little. Explain like four lines, five lines, and move on. Because if you want to tell the examiner, write, it's Charlie, this one, I studied, and it really is chemo, let me write. You are wasting your time. List, make to one point, five lines or four lines, you, you move on, one point. So we encourage that you mention more points and you explain a little. Why are we saying that? The examiner says if you mention one point, you get one mark. If you explain full page, and then let's say me, I explain full page, Emilia explained five lines. All of us will get half mark. Do you know why? Because examiners that are not senior examiners, when the mark finish, the chief examiner has to moderate the papers. So it's only the intelligent, the extraordinary students that will get an explanation one mark. But myself and you, what even we are explaining, we don't even know whether it is correct. Why should we waste time explaining full piece to just get a half mark? So that is the technique for us all. The second question was to look at explain the use and application of taxation as a tool of physical policy to stabilize the economy. You see, they repeated, if you check, this came in 2018. And they brought it back to 2019 in a different form. Or are they lying? Sure, it's true. Yes, they just changed it. And they brought it back. Look at 2018. Taxation is an important tool that helps and help economies the world over, including those of the developing country, required. Explain social impact of taxation in Ghana. So this one, if you mention the economic importance, you get zero mm -hmm. because they are specific. They say identify it. social importance of taxation. So please, uh, I think that is what we were supposed to look at today. Uh, if there is a question, let me take it or we bring the class to an end. Please, is there any question? No, sir. Uh, okay, boss Ima, over to you. Do you have any uh, word for us? Thank you very much, my colleague, Mr. Musa, for an excellent job done. Um, for our family members, our colleagues on the call, uh, I want to take your feedback on what Mr. Musa has taken us through today. Like we normally do after each section, we try to do a recap. He has taken us through a number of past exam questions, very important. So let me hear from you. Um, Emilia, Collins, Alberta, Derek, or say to two, uh, Rachel, Ramatu, Stanley, and Theophilus. At least a comment or two wouldn't be bad. Okay, so okay, we started with fiscal policy, and we explained what is fiscal policy to be, 
how government uses her revenue and expenditures to influence the behavior of the economy to achieve certain stated objectives, which may which include employment, um, curbing rural urban imbalances, um, trying to control exchange rates or foreign exchange and prevent dumping of unwanted goods or services. There are more. Then he explained that um, the budget or the national budget that is being drawn yearly um, is, a, is a way of um, identifying our revenue and expenditures. And that has three, three forms. Either we are having um, a budget surplus, which is contract contractionary, or a budget deficit, which is expansionary, or a balanced budget, which is a moderate policy. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you very much for that attempt. Uh, Collins, do you want to add to that? Okay. Um, our course rep, are better. Okay, so, so uh, we went further to discuss the um various monetary policies and then that of fiscal as well. So basically, the two um tools that government uses to control the economy is the fiscal and monetary and then the fiscal aspect deals with the revenue expenditure like my colleague mentioned and then with the monetary policy um it's um bank of ghana they uses those two to control the uh, money circulating in the economy and then um we discuss in details the impact um, economic growth, inflation control, employment and exchange rate for the uh, monetary policy and then fiscal policy to mention the aggregate demand, economic stabilization, and so on and so forth. We also discussed the various monetary uh, policy tools, the OMO, that is open market operations, the reserve requirement, and then the rest. And then we made mention of the types of the uh, fiscal policy, the discretionary fiscal policy and automatic stabilizers. Okay. Uh, I think I don't want to say oh, so, so much yeah, yeah, I get it. <laughs> uh, so let's hear from Ramatu. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> I would say I'll begin from where I went and the types of fiscal policy. We mentioned two main um types, which is the discretionary, which talks about um deliberate changes <clears throat> in government spend spending and taxes to influence the economy. So with this particular type, we are saying that the government has influence. It deliberately does the changes to what spends and um taxes as well, but with the automatic stabilizer, it has no influence on it. It has to do with built-in mechanism that automatically adjust the government spending and taxes to influence um, the <clears throat> economy. <clears throat> and um, I, I think we also looked at um, government grants and um, inter-government transfers in relation to local government. And um, with the government grants, I think he made mention of um, the grants that government makes available to local government, like the um, MDAs, um, the, um, how do we call them? I think he, he cited examples and all that. And he also gave us implications of that. He said that with the local, <clears throat> it helps in local development, fiscal stability. And I think um, it also reduces over-reliance on central government. Uh, something like that. So that's what I got. Okay, that's a good attempt. Thank you very much for that. Uh, Tilsit. 
Theophilus, if we can hear from you. Hello, Theophilus. Okay. Uh, Derek. Hello, Derek. Okay. Derek seemed not to be behind his device. Or say to two. Okay. Uh, sorry, they, they have said it all. I said to two, a man of few words. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, Madam Aivo. Hello, Madam Aivo. Okay. Um, on this note, uh, I think I want to say a big thank you to Mr. Musa for a great work done. And I want to encourage all of you that let's continue with the momentum because we are on a journey to achieving something great. If you don't know, the pass rate for the paper, principles of taxation, is even lower than uh, financial reporting, meaning a lot of people write a paper and they don't pass. Okay. But uh, Boss Bill, myself, Mr. Musa, and Uncle Johnson are on a mission to ensure that you will secure your pass mark. Not only a pass mark, but to do very well and appreciate uh, principles of taxation. So I encourage you to uh, be regular at classes, to participate once the videos are shared. Uh, make sure you listen again, make your own note, grab a copy of Boss Bill's book on principles of taxation. If the Institute book on principles of taxation is also ready, please try as much as possible and grab one. So on this note, I want uh, someone to give us the closing prayer. Who will do that? I said to pray for us. Hello, I said to. Yeah, I'm here. Please pray for us. Okay. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for a successful session. Um, we are very grateful for the understanding that you've granted us, and we pray that during the examination time, you will not forsake us. As we are about to sleep or as we are about to learn, we pray that you be our guide and protector. These are many blessings we ask. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you and good night. Amen. Good night. Amen. Please, the group, um, sir, sorry, let me try. Yes. Um... So, I wanted to ask have a group like discussions instead of like the various groups you created because some members are not active anymore so if those who are very active we can be meeting for group discussions discussing past questions because that's what you're doing Amy. okay okay so i'm not opposed to that you can do that but please forgive me okay, you have to skip tomorrow's group discussion. I guess you understand why. Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, you are not too well. Yes, please. So forgive me for <laughs> tomorrow. Uh, when I'm well, we'll find a way of catching up. Okay. So I'm then not... Then we can oh. meet in, and then maybe have the exam questions discussed. No problem. Questions. I can wake up okay. at four and share the link with you okay. so that you can join okay. and have your discussion. Yeah, I think that's that fine with me. I yes, think it's not bad. Oh, I agree. Mm. Not really. So, I mean, what's, what's the tax tomorrow? I, the, the, so far, what we've done, tax administration and then the fiscal policies, we can go through the past questions and then answer 
the various questions under that. Yes. Yeah, so tomorrow, what time? Um, it was done, right, sir? The yeah, time... four a.m. Yeah, four a.m. Okay. I think I also have a difference beyond that. Um. If we are going to solve past questions on um, maybe the previous topic, that's fine. But I feel in group discussions, normally we all benefit when we all reach well before we meet. If not, it will be one-sided. So I suppose that either we leave what we treated today out so that some of us can go back to have a better reading on that, or we focus on only what we've done previously, as in the first topic, tax administration, then everybody can also contribute better. If not, some of us might be quiet to listen to others, which I think wouldn't be too fair. Okay. Okay. Um, the <coughs> questions are ready. You know, I promise there's going to be a quiz on that topic. The, tax administration. Yes. The questions are ready. Multiple choice questions, true or false. And they're like, I'm just looking at how best to administer that question. Uh, whether when I send a soft copy to you, you print and answer them and send it back to me. Initially, I was thinking I could administer it on our website, but you know, for this course, we are not uh, registering on the website. Mm. It's a free session. So it looks like I may have to send you the, no, no, no. Uh, the okay. soft copy. Okay. okay. I'll buy you a painting book. What will you paint? Mango. I bet I want to buy a printing book, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. So Let's take a final decision. Now we meeting tomorrow at 4 a.m. Mm -hmm. Or you want us to skip and do our private studies around that time? Colleagues, uh, what do you think? Um, where are the men? <laughs> and nobody is speaking. Uh, we can skip and maybe have our personal studies uh, tomorrow. Yeah. But I will try and wake everyone up. I'll call the group. <laughs> So that you all wake okay. up. And okay. then you can do a personal, yeah. Okay, well, and then if you can do the, the um, like you can go through the past questions yourself and then later when we meet with this time. Good. Okay. okay. Oh, okay. We'll work. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank so, you so much. we're waking you up <laughs> for AM. Please don't turn on your phone or put on silence. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay.